Okay, what is paramotor safety? You hear people talk about, oh, this is a good safe glider. What is a good safe glider? What is a good safe paramotor? What is the factors to having the best safety in paramotoring? There's a lot of BS out there where people pretend it's all people that, you know, were doing acro and messed up low to the ground. Totally false. The vast, vast majority are people literally basically flying straight and level or doing simple turns who have the wrong gear and don't have proper training and they end up stalling or spinning out of the sky and or just stuff happens because of very specific things. So first let's look at the glider. A certified glider with certified height hook in points uh, is absolutely critical because they're designed to recover from basically every known scenario that can happen on a paraglider. Things like spins or stalls or collapses. Uh, the gliders, a good safe glider is designed to recover from these things. Now, a good safe glider is also designed to prevent these things. Like a certified glider should allow you to bury the brakes accidentally without stalling. It should not stall just because you buried the brakes for a second accidentally and pulled too much brakes. It's very common. You'll see people literally spin and stall out of the sky. And it's not because, oh, whoops, they made a mistake, which obviously it is a mistake. But there's very simple things that would have prevented it. If they'd have been on the correct glider, like a Dominator or a good name brand certified actual glider, not a glider they call reflex because those are death traps, but gliders that are designed not to spin. Now, another part of that is the glider needs to handle really well. Sometimes you get these beginner class safety gliders, but the performance is so terrible, people try and tell it to turn and it just doesn't turn. So they start pulling more and more and more brake thinking it's supposed to turn when they end up spinning the glider before they get the desired turn. So there's a lot more to it than just the certifications. You can't go, oh, this is an A-class glider, or this is DHV1, or this is AFNOR standard, so it's safe. That's not how it works. There's a whole lot more to the story on that point. So you'll see all over YouTube people trying to make a turn and suddenly the glider spins and they crash right into the ground. Well, for one, you need a glider that handles and does what you tell it. The Dominator, for example, which we found to be the best glider in history that we found, it literally handles better than an acro glider. So if you start burying the brake, it's going to turn so fast, you're going to stop pulling brake and go, whoa, that was too much. Where a glider that doesn't turn, you keep pulling more and more and more thinking it's supposed to turn. If you start to understand how safety can relate to the performance. So you don't just want a pig piece of crap that is a boat that doesn't have performance because the lack of performance creates a safety issue in itself. Like a guy who died on a Black Hawk, he tried to make a quick turn, was heading at a tree line, tried to turn, glider wouldn't turn, he pulls more and more brake, boom, glider spins right out of the sky because it didn't turn. Now, a Dominator, in the exact same instance, would have turned however fast he wanted it to turn because the handling is incredible. So you tell it to turn, it turns. On top of that, even if you buried the brake as far as your arm can physically pull it with certified height hook in points, it's still not going to spin or stall because it's designed to be spin and stall resistant. Where the Blackhawk glider you was flying is totally uncertified class glider. Their hook in points aren't even certified anyway. So even if you had a certified class glider, all that stall and spin resistance and work that they did goes right out the window, hooking it to uncertified height hook in points. So it's very, very critical that you have a glider that turns. I mean, you can see us doing things on dominators that nobody else in the world can do. So obviously it handles. It's pretty simple. But it's also has that 
stall and collapse resistance and spin resistance and all of the safety factors as well as the stability on top of it. So there's a lot more to getting a safe glider than just looking at a certification because this A-class glider is not the same as that A-class glider. Now, although A and DHB1 and AFNOR standard are all very similar, the gliders are very, very different. Many people have been injured and killed in scenarios that didn't need to happen, even on a glider that's certified. So there's more to it. Now, then you got to add training into that and understand how super training and real actual training actually works. Real actual training creates real actual skill and feel. How does that happen? It takes about 25 to 60 hours of glider control practice to really master control the glider. Well, when you're kiting for 25 to 60 hours, on the ground, you will stall the glider and spin the glider over and over and over and over, literally thousands of times, take collapses, everything on the ground, because the glider is trying to fall and not doesn't want to just stay above you. So if you take all of those hours, you learn a feel, you feel how much break it takes before the glider stalls, and you learn the, the reflexes to, if it does start to stall, you know to get the hands back up, let it restart, and then stop it from collapsing. And it has to happen that fast. You can't think about it and go, oh yeah, if it stalls, just put your hands up. It's worthless, just like bogus training. It's worthless because if it's not a reflex, you can't react fast enough because the first thing you need to do is let your hands all the way up. The second thing you need to do is add break. And if your timing is off and you break at the wrong time or throw your hands up at the wrong time, you make it worse. If you throw your hands up when the glider's surging forwards, boom, it shoots forward even more violently and wants to gift wrap you. And if you hit brakes right at the point where it's about to stall, you kick it into the stall. So you can't just tell someone, oh yeah, this is what you do. That's worthless. You have to have them practice it for 25 to 60 hours until they can go out and kite all day long and never, ever, ever take a collapse or stall their glider accidentally or lose control of their glider. It should get to a point where that simply doesn't happen before they ever get in the air. In the air, those skills are exactly the same. Everything's the same. If you feel that glider start to overfly you and unload, it feels exactly the same as it did on the ground. You add brake, you repressurize it. Glider goes behind you, boom, your hands up. Reduce the pressure so that you don't stall it. Those things have to become reflexes. So one, you need the best and safest gear but two, you need the training to have the reflexes to respond to that gear. Now, another big lie load of crap you'll hear people say is, oh, we only fly in perfectly smooth air. That's just showing their level of complete ignorance and absurdity. There's no such thing. Weather conditions change, and if you fly 10 miles, you could get everything from no wind to eight mile an hour wind going that way to 15 mile an hour wind going the other way. Conditions change everywhere you're at. And so your skills have to be where you respond instinctively because there is no such thing as perfectly smooth air. And if you think there is perfectly smooth air, and you can ensure to always fly in perfectly smooth air, you need to ground yourself immediately and never fly again until you graduate super training and get proper gear because that is a hamburger short of a Happy Meal. There's no such thing. So be very, very careful if you hear anyone say, oh, we only fly in perfectly smooth conditions. Total lie, totally false. You have to be prepared for anything. I've been flying in morning cold air when it's smooth as can be and whap, you get nailed with violent conditions. 
There's all sorts of different conditions in the sky, so you have to have the right gear to be prepared for it, and you have to have the skills, and then there's the paramotor. So next is the paramotor. What are some of the basics of paramotor safety? Well, I did a video on the 304 reasons competent pilots only fly flat tops. Literally, if somebody's not flying a flat top paramotor, they're either totally ignorant of the sport or totally incompetent and just totally clueless. Because there's very simple basics. Things like protection from the prop, crumple zone, uh, face plant protection, where if you fall forwards, it doesn't try and smash your face in the ground. Having a grip uh, safety uh, trigger throttle with a grip safety so it can't accidentally lock full throttle. You see these guys with bicycle brakes for throttle. Well, what do you think happens if you trip and fall down? You land right on that throttle. Then not only does their flimsy cage have the prop hit the cage, but they end up doing it full throttle and the thing just catastrophically self-destructs on top of them. So paramotor safety is absolutely critical. Uh, there's many basics like I've named, but to get the real full story, you want to look at my video series of the 304 reasons competent pilots only fly flat tops. Because then it goes into extreme detail, and there's so much you just never know about the sport until you watch that video series and start to understand everything that can and will go wrong and how the flat top specifically and only the flat top is the only unit designed to actually address every single well-known issue in the sport. So, paramotor safety. Gotta have the safest wing that does have the performance, because that's a big part of it. Now, another part of that performance is speed. Very, very commonly, I hear people say, oh, I don't need a fast glider. I just want to boat around and see the sights. Well, what happens when the wind picks up? Yes, you do need a fast glider. Speed is critical to safety. I set the world speed record on the Dominator. So not only is it the safest glider, but it also has the very best performance. So you have both. Because if you've got a total pig glider that only goes 18 miles an hour, what happens when you get 25 mile an hour wind or 30? You're going backwards and there's nothing you can do about it and it's a horribly bad scenario. So it's critical to have a glider that has the performance to be able to cut through those stronger conditions and fly through that stronger rotor and trashy air without getting knocked all over the place and being at the mercy of the conditions because you cannot ensure perfectly smooth air doesn't exist. So you have to have the glider that has the performance to be able to cut through that. I mean, I set the speed record at 51 miles an hour. So literally, if you had 50 mile an hour wind, you could still fly through it with that glider. So the glider that you choose is life and death critical. The paramotor you choose is life and death critical. And the skills are all life and death critical. And all of them go together. That is what makes you the best and safest pilot. Not any one single thing. If you don't have a flat top paramotor specifically, boom, you just chuck 60% of your safety right out the window. If you don't have the correct glider, boom, you just chuck a huge chunk of safety right out the window. If you didn't get super training specifically and learn real actual skills, boom, you just chucked a huge chunk of your safety right out the window. So. Do the smart thing and get the best. Stack all the odds in your favor. There's a reason I'm still alive after way, way, way over 11,000 flights doing things nobody else on earth can do. And it's gear and it's skill. They go together. It's, you know, if I was wrong, I would be dead. One of the reasons nobody can do what I'm doing is because they didn't live long enough to build those skills. If you don't have the safer gear, you're not gonna live long enough to actually get to that highest level of skill. There's many pieces that go together, so it's absolutely critical to stack the odds in your favor. I mean, at Super Training, I'm literally handing you the best of the best of the best on a silver platter and giving you every single piece and detail 
to perfected skills and the absolute best, safest, and perfected gear. So give us a call, 800-707-2525, and do it the right way that, so that you can move forwards instead of have a nightmare and being scared to get in the sky knowing any second could be your last. Get the best training in the world and the best gear so you can have the confidence to be able to have fun going and flying knowing that you're prepared and could literally fly through a 35 mile an hour rainstorm gust front and still live through it as opposed to the guy who might not. So give us a call, do it right. It's the funnest thing in the world if you do it right. So call us, 800-707-2525.